it's so great to have you here i know people are dialing in from different parts of the world there are people from the us from the uk kenya ghana tanzania nigeria from north cyprus from toronto Your being here is a commitment to yourself and to your life. What are you committed to creating in your life? For me, going into retirement, I wanted to learn new things, new ways, new ideas and new language. It definitely pumped me up. It was an extremely rewarding, refreshing experience. Going into those webinars, they are basically, for me, key six, to watch and rewatch and rewatch. Again. Leadership starts with self, just as charity begins at home. You cannot lead others without first mastering the ability to lead yourself. I'm a small business owner in the UK. I believe if any but one is thinking of becoming a leader, it's a cost you really should pay attention to. You can't go wrong with it. Look. When it comes to achieving your goals, you must think like an entrepreneur. Whatever you're trying to accomplish will most likely have a how-to guide, a webinar, or a template online. Honestly, Juliet, I had the encounter with your first Beyond Limits experience in 2017 when I was a speaker. It was from then you started to transform lives of very young girls. And I'm sure those girls today are reaping the reward of the seed you planted in them. The vision boarding activity actually helped me see my goals in a much bigger perspective. The how will come later. But in the process of creating your vision, focus on the what. Really get centered around what is that picture that inspires me. In creating your vision, be inspired, be bold, be audacious. Your vision is very personal to you. Dare to dream big. You owe it to yourself. Welcome to 30 Days of Excellence in Conversation with Juliet Ehimuan, reaching you live from Cloud Studios, Lagos, Nigeria. Get ready for a fun and insightful time as we unveil Juliet Ehimuan's new resource, the 30 Days of Excellence Companion Set, and also enjoy insightful conversation that will set you on your own transformational journey. We kick off the event with the Peste de Resistance, the reason why we are all here. Juliette Ahimouan is founder of the Beyond Limits Africa Initiative, 
a leadership and organizational capacity building initiative through which she runs masterclasses, webinars, and career mentorship. She is a country director at Google, leading Google's business strategy in West Africa. She was recognized by the London Business School as one of 30 people changing the world, named Forbes 20 among the top 20 youngest power women in Africa, and featured in BBC Africa Power Women series. Juliet is a thought leader on digital business strategy and leadership. She has over 20 years experience, primarily in technology, new media, and oil and gas, working in industries across Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. Juliet is a fellow of the Cambridge University Commonwealth Society and a board member of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, the private sector advisory group on the Sustainable Development Goals, independent non-executive director at Nestle Nigeria, and Fate Foundation. A certified coach, Juliet is a member of the Forbes Coaches Council. She is joined by renowned life coach, behavioral change catalyst, and keynote speaker, Lanri Olushola, who is recognized for pioneering the life coaching industry in Nigeria and creating the first wholly integrative coaching academy in West Africa. The catalyst, as he is fondly called, works to transform individuals and organizations across Africa and other parts of the world. Please welcome Juliet Ehimoan in conversation with The Catalyst, Larry Olushola, on achieving personal growth and success in 2021 and beyond. Give them a warm welcome in the comments. Hi, I'm The Catalyst and my name is Larry Olushola. And as we all know, 2020 has been an incredibly challenging, provocative, uncertain year. And, you know, many people have struggled with thriving, surviving, and succeeding. And that's why 30 Days of Excellence, uh, written by my very good friend Juliet, is so, so important. And that's why we're having this conversation. So, Juliet, Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Larry. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Fantastic. And I really, really want to do say thank you to you for, you know, creating this phenomenal body of knowledge that is really going to help a lot of people transition from that place of struggle into a place of success. So talking about 30 Days of Excellence, why, why did you decide to write this book? Thank you very much, Larry. So I feel that everyone has immense potential mm. and we all deserve a chance at realizing that full potential. From as far back as I can remember, I've always been drawn to wanting to be the best version of myself. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in growing up, I, I consumed a lot of material, just things that could help me learn and uh, understand myself better, how to function in the world better, how to be more effective, and so on. And I've also been inspired to share that with others at every opportunity. In the last few years, I've, um, through the Beyond Limits initiative, I have run a number of uh, masterclasses and uh, coaching programs to just share uh, mm -hmm. some of the principles and concepts that I've known to be effective with others. And like you rightly said, 2020 has been a very challenging year. And as we turn the page on 2020, the intention is to have a companion guide that can support people on a daily journey towards realizing their goals, towards creating and keeping their visions alive, towards attaining more effectiveness. And so um, the intention was to capture some of those timeless principles that are effective, that work in simple, practical uh, concepts shared in a way that is relatable, that people can digest in manageable chunks on a daily basis, and to create something that can help people form that daily habit mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. effectiveness and keep this top of mind. Fantastic. It's quite interesting because you are not referring to this, this, this incredible mm -hmm. piece as a book. You're calling it a companion. You're calling it um, a guide. It's a set of principles, Absolutely. right? Now, when people get this, how do they use it effectively? 
It's a, it's a great point. And this is a companion set because it, it complements uh, a lot of uh, the ad additional body of work that is uh, going on around, um, you know, self-leadership transformation and so on. And the intention is for this to be a daily guide. So the companion set comprises two mm. materials. There's the tabletop flip book, which is what I'm holding right now. Now, this That's is designed good. to sit very comfortably on your desktop, on mm. your anywhere that is visible to you so that it is very top of mind and you can presence it and refer back to it on a regular basis. So it's a spiral bound flip book and uh, each day you have some concepts and principles to reflect on. And then there's also the workbook, which is the one you're holding. Yeah. And that has additional spaces for people for, uh, there, there, there's a call to action and also spaces for people to reflect and write their thoughts and their plans and um, their learnings. And so the whole idea is for the entire set to be a companion on your journey towards self-leadership, towards achieving your goals, towards transformation. As you can see, I've already started working on mine. Fantastic. Yeah. So, you know, I'm going to take um, um, a cue from some of the things that I've already written and a few questions that I have for you. Um, now, Juliet, um, you know, there's 30 days of, you know, incredible nuggets, secrets, principles, concepts. Which are your top five? <laughs> That's a great question. It's worth also mentioning the fact that it's 30 days, but the intention, so they're not dated, right? Mm -hmm. You have day one, day two, but the intention is that after the 30 days, people can go back to the start and start all over again and just carry on until these become second nature. No. Now, in terms of my favorite, it's, it's pretty hard to choose because they're all so related. Uh, but I think I would start with day four, mm -hmm. which okay. is uh, to live the life you want you need to define it. Only then can you create it the way you want. I think this is paramount for every human being because life is not a series of random events. Life doesn't happen by accident. If we see people who accomplish great things, quite often there is a very clear vision. Mm. They have a direction they're going towards and then there's a plan to achieve it. And that's the invitation to everyone as we move into 2021. And, and to be honest, not just moving into a new year. Life gives us many opportunities to begin again, many op opportunities to recalibrate and decide, how do I want my life to go? So my invitation through this is for everyone to decide very deliberately, what do I want to achieve in different areas of my life? Maybe it's in my career, maybe it's in my um, emotional life, my family life, and so on. Life exists in different domains. Be very clear about where you want to go because that also gives you direction and that sets the tone and also shows you where to spend your time, how to mobilize your resources. And you'll find out that um, being deliberate and having that clear vision uh, makes it easier and more likely that you will achieve it. Hmm. Because whether we know it or not, we are creating our realities. Hmm. You can be doing it consciously or unconsciously. And this is really inviting everyone to bring consciousness into the process. So be deliberate and say, this is what I want my life to be about. And so that's, uh, that's the, the whole idea one. of this. <clears throat> but even listening to what you're saying, yes. you know, something comes to mind. I, I find that um, quite a number of people cannot tell the difference between what they want and what they don't want mm -hmm. and the impact of focus on either what you want or what you don't want. Do you Absolutely. want to give some clar clarifications on that? Absolutely. So having a vision is really being very clear about what you want and mm. defining that. And then in that space, because whatever you focus on expands. Mm. So if you focus more on the things that you don't want in your life or the things that are not going well, etc., then it's more likely you're putting more energy in that direction. It's more likely that expands for you. That's more present in your reality. Without intending it, you're creating more of that. Mm. But if you stay still and just really reflect, and this is an internal and a very personal process, it's not about what people expect of you. It's not about what society says. It's about being true to yourself in your core. What do I want my life to be about? And once you have that clear picture, you know, there's this um, uh, statement by Lewis Carroll that if you don't know where you're going, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter which road you take, mm -hmm. which I think is very interesting and speaks to the importance of having a clear vision because then you know what you want 
and therefore how to marshal your energies and what is out, what's in and what's out mm. and the things that you want to turn away from. And, uh, and therefore, uh, the, the invitation is for people to actually take the time out to do that. And so these, sometimes these, these are very simple concepts, but they're, there's a lot of, um, they're very, they speak to the heart of the matter. Mm. They're very cogent as well. And so because they're simple, sometimes we overlook them. Everybody has heard the word vision, has used it in different contexts. But I can assure you, more than half of the world's population, or more than half of the people watching this um, uh, webinar, have not written down in very concrete terms what their vision is. Even though they know what a vision is, they've, they've heard about it. Um, talked about over and over again. And so my invitation is for people to actually just take the time and internalize these concepts and these principles and make them work for you because this is a very, very personal process and it really makes a difference in getting you from A to B. Wow. So you in, in, in this conversation, you've spoken about the law of attraction, that which you you know, think focus on expand. Focus on expand. You've spoken about vision, and you've also spoken about writing it down. Yes, as a fundamental principle. Correct. Do you want to shed some more light about how to write that vision down? Absolutely. I believe very much in writing down your vision because it takes it away from your head and into the world in a very concrete way. It also prevents you from. It helps you to hold yourself accountable. Hmm. Otherwise, you know, we, it's very easy for if things are blurred and fuzzy, mm. then you can dance around it, wriggle out of it, get yourself off the hook, etc. But when you write it down, then it's concrete as a first step, mm. right? And then in terms of writing it down, I always encourage people that you create your vision, but you live into your vision on a daily basis. Mm. So I wouldn't say start my vision by saying, I want to. Because that means it's always out there. I want to, I'm, I never get there. Usually I will start by saying, I have. Mm. It doesn't mean that you've experienced the full manifestation of it. However, if there's that clarity, then you should be living into your vision every day, mm. right? You are bringing it closer to you by the steps you take, by the things, the choices you make on a daily basis. And so I would start with, I have. And then say whatever that picture is you want to create. The thing about a vision is it's a picture. So it doesn't have to be specific. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about smart goals. That's in the domain of goals. Mm -hmm. But in terms of your vision, it's just a picture of what you want to create, what you want to have, you know, what sort of experience you want in, in different areas of your life. So to just write it down that way. I would go a step further, actually, and even bring in some positive energy and gratitude into it, mm -hmm. right? Believing that it's going to happen. And so I would say... I'm so happy and grateful now that I have. Mm. And then whatever that is, now that I have a successful uh, business that impacts lives on the scale and gives me the opportunity to express myself fully in a way that I love, you know, whatever that is for, for each person. But that's how I would suggest structuring it. All right, fan fantastic. So, so you brought gratitude, which is one of my own favorite principles here. Fantastic. You know, they, they, they quite a lot other principles that I really like. So I'd like you to shed a bit more light on gratitude. You know, um, a lot of people are going through difficulties. They're yes. going through challenges. Even when they write the vision down, even when they visualized it, and they're living it on a daily basis, there will be challenges along the way. Absolutely. What is the role of <clears throat> having an attitude of gratitude, as you put it in the book? What is the role of that attitude of gratitude in helping them bring their vision to fruition? Absolutely. So life consists of a diversity of experiences. Mm. We all have our ups, we have our downs, we have our challenging moments, we have our joyful moments, etc. And it's very easy, again, to the point we were making earlier about what you choose to focus on. You can, it's important that we examine what we're focusing on in our lives. You can be a glass half full person or a glass half empty person where you see everything that is wrong and woe is me and I'm a victim, life is not going the way I want it. You know, COVID, I had big plans for 2020 and then COVID happened. Look at what happened to my business and so on. So any of us can create all these, can have these realities and create this and have these stories and they'll be real. Mm -hmm. So this is not, they, they, there's evidence to it. Mm -hmm. But what's important is to, 
also to take a moment to actually look around you for the things you can be grateful for. How you've been incredibly blessed. Mm. Because, you know, if we take the COVID pandemic as an example, yes, your business went down, perhaps. Uh, you lost uh, revenue. Your plans got disrupted. But can you be grateful for being alive? It's a health crisis after all. Mm. So we can't even take health for granted. But if you're healthy, can you be grateful about that? Because if you were ill, these things won't matter, right? And so, and it's important. The reason why that's important is because it lifts your energy and it empowers you to then look at and energizes you to then look at what you want to, what needs to change in your life. So it doesn't mean when we say be grateful for your life or be grateful for things that happen to you, it doesn't mean anything goes. Mm. Everything that happens to me, I'm just going to be like, woo, life is good. Mm. That's not the idea. However, if you start from a place of gratitude, that energizes you and helps you to change the things you want to change from a more empowered position, not from a victim position. Mm. Mm. And that has a certain quality and um, effectiveness to it. So, Julia, what I'm hearing, right, is that this principles and each of the days, they don't stand alone. It seems like they're all interwoven. Because if you have a vision, if you yes. have a dream, um, if you strive to be someone, to, to achieve s something, right? Absolutely. It is important for you to, you know, have that level of self-discipline. Correct. Where you make the requisite sacrifices. When you take the steps that you need to take, when you need to take it, such that when you achieve those goals, right? You would, you would feel fulfilled, Correct. satisfied, and that's the highest sense of reward Absolutely. and gift that you can give yourself. Absolutely. Wow. Because wow. the human being is one whole mm. and a multifaceted whole. There are many parts to us. Mm. You have your emotional life, your spiritual life, your physical life, your mental faculties. Like mm. this is all happening in, in, in one human being. Mm. So we're a complex um, tapestry of many things. And so these concepts that touch on, you know, different parts of life and, and present different perspectives, et cetera, everything is interconnected because it's, it's, it's one life. And just to say something about the, what I was saying about discipline. So the, the, this is not to say that people, for you to achieve anything, it's, it's all about suffering, et cetera. That's ex it's exactly the opposite. I'm trying to communicate the fact that take yourself on and then find a way to make it happen. Sometimes, so maybe you need to exercise, right? And you, you, you probably don't like running. Perhaps you enjoy dancing. Mm. That could be a great, fun alternative. Mm. So it's really about being very deliberate that this is going to happen <laughs> and then looking at ways to make it work for you. Mm. Fantastic. So, so let's go into personal brand, personal brand. Yes. <laughs> Why is that so important? So I think uh, I see personal brand, your personal brand as the intersection between perception and reality. Mm. I would always, um, uh, you know, caution people though about just going for, oh, I want to create a personal brand. I want to create a personal brand uh, because quite often what happens then is that there's a lot of focus on the perception, but it needs to be grounded in reality. You start from the reality. Mm. So when I talk about personal brand, I'm starting with what is the identity you want for yourself in authenticity? And so consciously applying yourself to be that person. If you want to be known as someone who gets the job done, then make sure you're, you're reliable. Mm. Each time you're giving something to do, you actually get it done and you're accountable. Those types of things. So when, when you get that reality right, that would be the image of you that exists out there in the world. Now, of course, you know, in an organizational setting, you may need to take some extra steps to make sure that um, you're, you're consciously sharing and showing who you are, right? But it must start from an authentic place. Otherwise, it's phony. So we're talking about reality. We're talking about substance before form. Absolutely. Wow, fantastic. So me, I've shared three. I've shared gratitude. I've shared personal brand. I've shared self-discipline. You've shared You're one. doing better than I am. Yeah, you've shared, shared one. one. So I'm going to let you <laughs> share a second one. So I'm going to share day 19, I believe it is, which is about, yes, living in the now. Oh. Hmm. Now, this is very important because 
quite often we talk about the past and we talk about the future, mm -hmm. right? But really, in reality, the only time we have is now. Life can only be lived in the present moment. Human beings, one thing that is unique about human beings is that we have these faculties. We have memory, which is really about the past. And we have imagination, which is about the future. The unfortunate thing, though, is that sometimes we use those incredible tools to deprive, to take away from the present. Sometimes we're, we're, we're living completely in the past and we're bringing that into the present and projecting that into the future. Or oh, we're living in the future. We're not even present to today. The reality is the only time life is lived is now. Your life right now is as powerful as it is. This is it. Even that future you're aspiring to, when you get there, you'll be living it in a now moment. So if you want your life to be powerful, well, experience that power right now. Start, make sure that you're bringing that into your experience right now. Yes, we talk about having your vision. And of course, the vision, your vision, there's a certain futuristic aspect to it. Yes, have your vision but live into it in the now. Mm. You should be living into your vision on a daily basis, right? And memory is a great tool for learning, learning what worked, mm. what didn't work, mm. what you had well to focus on and so on and so forth. But the, the reason why I think this is important is for people to, um, I, I, I talked about on, on, on day one, I talked about the fact that every experience, every new day, every crisis, every new year is an opportunity to, recalibrate your life, right? Life gives us many opportunities to begin again, right? And so it's an invitation that in, this, in, in, in the present moment, yes, we can learn from, from the past, but there's no reason why your tomorrow cannot be greater than your today. Hmm. There's no reason why you cannot apply the, the learnings of, 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 um, of the past to inform what you do today to create a better tomorrow. So for us to use these more as tools rather than um, a way of consciously or unconsciously um, taking away from the present moment. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> what I hear in effect is that, you know, yesterday is gone. Yes. And, you know, there's nothing I can do about what I didn't do. Exactly. Or what I did yesterday. Exactly. It's gone. Yes. Right. And all that I should do with that is to learn from it. Yes. And, 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 and release myself from Exactly. Yes. And tomorrow is a function of what I do now. Exactly. And 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 the only time that I that I can change anything exactly is in the moment. Exactly. Wow. Well, exactly. But a lot of people cheat themselves by by you know getting distracted from what they have the power to do now by focusing on yesterday and being distracted about exactly tomorrow. rather than using them as tools. Mm. It's okay. We have memory for a reason. It's there to make sure that. We remember what we've learned. We're acquiring knowledge as we go on. It's a, it's a powerful tool. And yes, it's it's quite natural for us to sometimes just stay in that space in memory or or, or imagination. But none of the reality is none of that is real. Mm. Right? It's gone. What mm. we have, the reality, if you want tomorrow to be fantastic, start creating it now. 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 It's the now, the next now, the next now. Moment by moment, that's how we create our reality. Wow. So and you, so that's why it's important that we continue to choose. And that's why it's important not to live life in um, what pile, uh, co -pile, what's this, what's this uh, mode where it's just running? Um, automatic mode. In auto, exactly. Automatic, autopilot. Auto <laughs> that we don't live life in autopilot. We're very conscious about deciding and creating the life that we want. Wow. So it's uh, now... That you had yesterday that created your now today and it's your now today that will create your now tomorrow. I love Absolutely. that. I love that. So I'm gonna give you another opportunity. Thank you. So you you stole that one from me because I wrote it down. The power <laughs> of now was another, you know, principle that I really liked. I I I also like the one about um so day 30 about being the captain of your ship. Mm. The ship being the captain of the ship that is called your life. So if you imagine your life as a ship, a ship will not move unless directed by the captain to do so. Mm. If you want to go from uh, Lagos to uh, Abuja or Ibadan, or um, yeah, to Abuja, you have to be the one to plot the map. Like this is this is how, well, in this case, you just get on the plane, but you have to make those decisions that, okay, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to go by air or by road. I have to buy a ticket. Um, and then you get yourself to the airport and so on and so forth. Pick the airline 
that you're going to use, what time of the day, and so on. So you really chart the course. And the same applies to, to, to life. I always talk about self-leadership, mm. the fact that leadership starts with self. To be a leader, it's important that you start by leading self because charity begins at home. Mm. You can't give what you don't have. And so being the captain of the ship called your life is about taking 100% responsibility for taking yourself from where you are to where you want to, to get to. It doesn't mean you don't get help. Help is available. Help is available on different planes, in different forms, etc. In fact, sometimes there's a saying that when you decide, the world agrees with you, mm. right? Yeah. Because once mm. you make that decision, then you're able to recognize the help that is available or the resources that you need. But it's important that you're, you're, you're deliberate and you take responsibility for moving your life in the direction you want it to go. Profound principles. Um, so um, I also like that, the, the principle on attitude. Mm. Let's say that attitude determines your altitude. altitude. Do you right. want to talk to us about that? Absolutely. Well? So um, attitude is very important. That Sometimes it can be the difference between failure or not, success mm. or not, or having something, because you can have something good in your hand, but if you don't, but with the wrong attitude, you lose it. I always say that if I was interviewing for a job and I had two candidates, one very competent, et cetera, but just completely difficult to work with. And another person, the right attitude, great, maybe not as technically competent as the first person. If I had to absolutely make a decision on the sport, I'll go for the second person. Mm. Because there's no point for you being a, 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 a you know a, a technocrat that no one can work with. That would just create bad vibes within the, the team or the organization. And I always tell this story, and I'll just say very quickly, about two bricklayers building a cathedral. Mm -hmm. One of them was very, very enthused. He was uh, energetic, enthusiastic, etc. While the other looked very bored, just laying one brick on the other. So they asked the first bricklayer, what are you doing? And they asked the, the second one, the, the, one, the, the one that was looking bored, what are you doing? He said, I am laying bricks. And they asked the other guy who was very energized, and he said, oh, I'm building the biggest cathedral in the city. Mm. They were doing exactly the same job, laying bricks. But the, the other bricklayer could see a higher purpose in what he was doing. That's attitude. Mm. And clearly, if there's an opportunity for a bigger job, he would be more ready mm. because he, he's likely to be more informed He's the one that is likely to take an interest to see how the cathedral, the, 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 to see the design of the full cathedral, how the different pieces come together. So he'll be a more qualified candidate, even for a bigger job. And so when people say where I am now is not where I want to be, I often say that's fine, but where you are now is what you have. And if you want to go to the moon or anywhere, you can only start from where you are. And where you are offers you something. It offers you an opportunity to learn, to grow, to build networks, to show what you're made up, made of and what you're capable of so that when another opportunity comes that is more in line with what you think you want to do, you'll be more ready for it. Mm. But the last thing you want to do is to resign yourself to coast and say, this is not where I want to be, so I can't be bothered, right? Uh, because then you waste an important opportunity. So, so Juliet, um, what are you going to say to you know, anyone out there that is about to give up? Um, which of the fundamental principles would you say they need to quickly string together? Three principles that will bring them out of that mindset from that you know, um, place that they're at. They're about to give up. What would you say to them? I would say that you're, you've come this far for a reason. And you've demonstrated capacity, capability, in many ways to have gotten you this far. Your dreams are valid. You deserve a shot at making them happy, uh, happen. You deserve a shot at happiness. You deserve to be here. You're not an accident. You are here for a reason because you're special and you have something to contribute to the world. So I would invite you to take uh, ownership of that and re, you know, just recalibrate in terms of uh, making a decision about how you want your life to go. Uh, understand that you can be your best champion. You need to be the captain of your life. Help is available. 
make that decision and then just look around you for for the help that is available. Don't give up because you owe it to yourself to be as joyful, as fulfilled and as realized as you can be. Wow. And and, and I'm going to challenge everyone that is about to give up and say to them that, you know, life is validation that your purpose is still relevant. Absolutely. And and for the fact that you're still alive, it means that there's yes. something that the world is waiting for. Yes. Don't give up on the world. Don't give up on yourself. Find purpose and find meaning and go out there and become the best version of you. So 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 Juliet, there's the entrepreneur out there. Um that person that's just started his business, you know, um, has run his business for a few years and wants to take it to the next level. What are you going to say to them? And just to finish, just to say uh, uh, about purpose, purpose day three, I believe it is, yeah. actually provide some steps to help you identify and get in tune with your purpose, some questions you ask yourself, et cetera. Um, so your question is about entrepreneurs that are looking to go to the next level. Yes. So entrepreneurship is uh, is, is a great uh, vocation, <laughs> I'll call it, and it's one that is, um, you know, very much needed in any in any any country. Um, quite often, um, entrepreneurship really plays a huge role in job creation, in economic growth and development. So I applaud entrepreneurs because it also takes a certain amount of courage mm. and uh, resilience to succeed as an en entrepreneur. I would say that um, it's important that you. Um, uh, reach out and be part of collaborative networks, mm -hmm. like-minded people. So that's where tech hubs really, uh, depending on your, your type of business. But if, for example, uh, you're in the tech community, that's where tech hubs are useful, where you get like-minded people. But even going online, there's a lot of, there are forums you can be part of, etc. Now be very clear about just the basics uh, you know, what the business is about, your business plan, um, what you need to do to ensure that your, you, you get your product out there, your customers are happy, ensure that you have a constant feedback loop where you're getting feedback from customers because some of the greatest inventions we have today um, I traded based on customer feedback, right? WhatsApp that we know today didn't start as the app we, we have today. It started mm. as a status app. Mm. And it, 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 just keeping a pulse on how uh, users were using it and feedback, et cetera, is what helped to develop it into what it is today. Um, Android as well. And a number of products that we, we have out there that are really successful have iterated based on feedback. So it's important that you build a feedback mechanism as a core part of what you do, it's important to build a strong team mm. that complements you, right? Um, and makes for whatever gaps you may have or your blind spots, right? And and work very closely with that team and create a culture that supports innovation, that supports, um, you know, out of the box thinking, uh, excellence. Um, so those are some of the things that I would... So All right, fantastic. So you know, um, you know, it's been a very interesting conversation, and and it, and it really pains me that we can't go on and on and on and on and on and on. But also, you know, um, it's not good that we give them everything. <laughs> you know, I mean, because people will think, oh yeah, they've had that conversation. I've heard everything, right? So you know, there's thirty days of excellence, and you know, I'm going to challenge each and every one of you to go get the book. It's not just a book; it's a guide. It's a daily guide. It's a success manual. It's it's a self fulfillment you know, manual, and it's going to guide you each day on what steps to take. And then like Juliet said, you know, it's not just something you do in 30 days. It's something you do in 30 day cycles. Mm -hmm. You know, repetition brings about perfection and mm -hmm. excellence. So it is very, very key that you continue to work through it. And I recommend this book for each and every one of you. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, where can I get it? There. Uh, the outlets are scrolling um, at the bottom of the screen. And I want you to take that personal responsibility to remember that you, you are the captain of your sheep. Mm -hmm. I often say that you're not just the captain of your sheep. You're the driver towards your destiny and you're the master of your fate. Make that decision because of the power of now. Make that decision and get yourself 
the workbook and get yourself the tabletop. And, and I believe the concept of the tabletop is for you to be able to visualize and see each principle on a daily basis. And they say that that which you behold, you become. Absolutely. And so, so, so the day, tabletop reinforces the principle that you're working on on that day whilst you work on, you know, that principle in the manual. Um, so, um, um, Juliet, um, what we're going to do next is we're now going to go and unveil Yay. the book. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for this um, conversation. I've, you know, incredibly enjoyed it. I've learned so many things, and I hope that everybody out there also, you've learned a lot of lessons from here. Thank you for listening in. Thank you so much, Larry. Thank you. It's been a great conversation. Thank you. Welcome back. And now it's time to unveil this incredible and phenomenal body of knowledge. The workbook and the tabletop flip book. Make sure that you get both of them together because they work together. Congratulations, Juliet. Thank you so much, Lanry. Really wow. appreciate it. Wow. And it's available on Amazon and every bookstore across Nigeria. Go get yours right now. Remember, the power of now. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much. And Thank here's you. to a great rounding up of 2020 yes, and so. a fantastic 2021 uh, and beyond for everyone. Yes, I can't wait. And when we'll come back, Juliet is going to be answering all your questions. Make sure you start dropping your questions right now. Hi, my name is Falakeo Wuduni, co-founder and CEO of Emergency Response Africa and participant in the Beyond Limits Think Tank program. We really, really appreciated the opportunity to participate and especially to be face-to-face -face with so many industry heavyweights. I really like to commend the Beyond Limits Africa team for the last mentorship session. Based on the feedback from the session, we've also been able to develop a product called Brands Connect to connect brands with users through gaming where brands can give out their products and users can also connect with the brands. The Beyond Limit Transformational Series was truly amazing for me. Um, learning how to get a clearer picture about one's vision, um, personal effectiveness and more importantly improving one's leadership skills. As Juliet once said in a video, every individual is expected to be deliberate about what he or she wants, either as an entrepreneur or climbing the corporate ladder. Um, it was great to learn from their experience, um, hear about uh, what others are doing in the space and share about our business and what we're looking to do in healthcare across Africa. The transformational series and think tank where transformational, as the name implies, I learned a lot about myself, about personal leadership, decision making, making discipline and framing my world to see possibilities even when there is impossibility. Please welcome author of 30 Days of Excellence, Julieta Himawan, as she returns to answer all your burning questions. Continue dropping your questions and she will answer as many as the time permits. Hi, I'm delighted to present the 30 Days of Excellence companion set. There's the tabletop flip book that you can put on your desk or anywhere that is visible so that you can see it on a regular basis and make sure that those principles are top of mind. And also a workbook that has additional uh, spaces where you can put down your own reflections, there are calls to action and so on. And together, the intention is for this to really serve as a daily companion and guide for personal growth and success.
the concepts are organized on a daily basis for every 30 day cycle. And so once you go through the 30 days, you can go back to day one and start all over again, because these are concepts that are worth keeping top of mind and that are worth practicing on a regular basis until they become habits. Also, I would really recommend spending time to reflect on the concepts for each day, the concepts and principles, rather than just reading through like a novel to actually just take the lessons for each day and reflect on it and actually perform the exercises during the day. That way you can get the best out of this. I really wish you the very best as you uh, continue your journey around self-leadership, transformation, and um, fulfilling your vision. Delights was actually started to tell innovative, exciting and positive food stories out of Lagos, Nigeria. Being the foremost luxurious goods company in the entire West Africa is a big deal. Now, will you have every opportunity now? But you see, the opportunities you lose on account of your value system, that's your opportunity cost for what you believe and is the price you must be willing to pay. Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining this session. Uh, it's really great to be spending this time with you and uh, supporting the unveiling of 30 Days of Excellence. I hope that uh, this is going to be um, a companion guide that would be really useful and uh, helpful on your journey um, on self-leadership. So I'd love to take your questions now. Uh, I see there have been a lot of comments. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you for your feedback. Thanks for those who have ordered already. It's probably worth, it's worth mentioning that the books are available at the moment at Roving Heights, uh, Latena Books, Boulders Books, and from tomorrow you can also pre-order on Amazon. So I'm just going to take uh, some questions. So the first question, I keep making New Year resolutions, but never manage to sustain them beyond January. I think that's familiar to everyone. How can I make 2021 different? This is quite interesting and is one that we hear a lot of. I think it's a shared experience for most people. Um, more than 90% of people fail on their New Year resolutions before the end of January. What I would say is really, at the point of making those new year, new year resolutions we're all fired up we're motivated and i do cover that on one of the pages in the book the fact that motivation is what gets you started but commitment is what gets you going motivation is like excitement that energy is not sustainable it only exists for a period of time but then it needs to be replaced by the discipline of commitment to sustain that and so, and this is where uh, some of us have challenges when it comes to New Year resolutions. You know, it's a new year, it's new, we're enthused, and we just really, really want to go for it, right? But the structures that would really help to fuel that commitment sometimes are not in place. So my advice to anyone is, it's great to have those New Year resolutions, because as I, sa as I say uh, on day one, every new year, every day, is an opportunity to recalibrate your life. Life gives us many opportunities to begin again every, every second and so on. So it's great to have those new resolutions, but also let's think about how we can organize for success. 
What are, how do you hold yourself accountable? How do you get other people to hold you accountable? What structures can you put in your environment to just really help you? So for example, if your due resolution has something to do with um, your health and fitness or maybe your diet, right? An example of a helpful structure would be when you go to the supermarket, avoid the foods that you don't want to eat. Don't go to the supermarket, load your freezer with all the things that you're trying to get away from, and then you get home and try to exercise self-control and self-will. You're just setting yourself up for, for, you're making it more difficult than it needs to be. So that's an example of creating the right structure, having someone hold you accountable, uh, signing up for, uh, to learn something, ensuring you have a clear plan with steps, concrete steps to take, and having commitment to that uh, plan and focus. So these are some elements that we just really need to uh, have in place, going beyond the motivation and the resolution itself to what would it really take for me to make this happen? Question. There's a lot uh, <laughs> with the theme of, uh, of the year. The fact that we're getting to the end of the year. So this, one's, this is, um, the year is almost ending and I haven't done more than half of the things I planned to do. How can I manage my time more effectively going forward? Well, first of all, I'll say that this year has been a challenging year. So I wouldn't really be too hard on, on myself. I would invite you not to be too hard on yourself if you find that a lot of your goals were not achieved this year. A lot of people would probably share the same experience. It's been quite a tough year and a lot of plans have been disrupted. But in terms of more broadly, in terms of just how can we be more effective with our time, I always say that time is the currency of life and I covered that on um, one of the days in, in the book. That time is the currency of life. When you're alive, what do you have? Time. And that's why we talk about spending time the way we spend money or wasting time the way we waste money. Time management for me is really about priority management because we all have the same 24 hours in a day, uh, 60 minutes to the hour. There's nothing anyone can do about that, right? There's th all you can do is manage what you do with that time, manage your priorities within that time. And that's why it's so important to be clear about your vision, about where you're going, what life you're trying to create in different aspects of your life, because that helps you to focus. That helps you to marshal your time and other limited resources to where you can get the most impact, to the things that move you closer to your vision, to the things that matter more to you. So on a broad basis, that's one very fundamental way of making sure that we get a handle on how we're spending and managing our time, our priorities within time. And then for some tactical things, I think uh, there are a few steps that I would say that I have personally found to be effective. One is on a daily basis, just look at your, examine your, uh, how you spend your time and your level of productivity. You'll find out that uh, there are certain times in the day when you're more productive. I, for example, I'm a morning person. I like to get up very early, and I've shared this a number of times with people. I like to get up very early. I feel that my brain is fresh at that time, and that's the time I do a lot of my uh, brain work. So, you know, I'm in an industry where things change very rapidly. So to keep up to date, that's the time where I read journals, I catch up on email, reports, uh, you know, look at relevant dashboards and things like that. For you, it might be later in the night. So just identifying when you feel more productive and also based on your circumstance, where you can actually just physically be more productive. Maybe there's a time of the day where you're alone at home. Right now, we're all working from home. Well, most of us are working from home, or some of us um, are working from home. And so you might actually find out there are times in the day when it's just you at home. Everybody else is away doing one thing or the other. And that might be a great time to do some of your more productive work. Another thing I've found effective is just having a master list, which is a list of all the things that you need to do on a daily basis. That ensures that you don't forget things, you don't leave things out, and that you are very clear about you know, the things that need to happen during the day. And my approach to that would be 
ensure that the most important things on the list get done. If we don't have that full picture, sometimes you may spend more time on the things that are not really that important for you, and then you don't have time to put the big rocks in. <laughs> and so it's important to make sure that the most important things get done. And then also, you know, following that to ensure that as much as possible, we are taking things off that list. Now, if you're great and you, know, you, you exhaust your list in, in less than 24 hours, that's fantastic. You know, it, it's okay to have idle time. It's okay to, 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 not ha to have unscheduled time and all of that, right? But you just want to make sure that the things that are most important for your success do get done. Another tip I would share around managing time is just leveraging the tools and resources that are available, technology platforms, digital tools, there's no point reinventing the wheel. Whatever you're trying to accomplish, it's very likely that there is a how-to guide, a webinar, a template online that you can leverage that can give you a head start so that you're not necessarily starting from the basics each time. You can get a head start. That way you save time and get to your destination faster. The final thing I'll say is leverage people in your life. Uh, no man is an island. If, for example, you're trying to improve your computing skills, Maybe there's someone in your life that is just really great and has those skills. Spending just sitting down with that person for maybe 30 minutes can really help you get ahead very quickly, get a head start, and then you figure out the rest of it on your own. So also leveraging people in our lives and networks. And also, it's a two-way street. Being available to also support people when we're able to do so. I think that's critical as well. Thank you very much for these amazing questions. Getting motivated to start a project is easy. That's true. But a little time in and the motivation seems to dissipate. How does one keep motivated amidst challenges and failures? This is actually very similar to what I talked about I earlier, that you know, motivation can get you started. And it's, it's, an if it's a great tool to get you started. But the reality is that anything can happen. There are things we can control, but there are things outside of our control. So you may have even done your homework, but it just rains on your picnic. Challenges, failures, those are a natural part of life. Those things happen, life happens. Another question. I have so many things I love. I want to do everything. A lot of times, it's draining, even though I love them all. I can't seem to pick one. How can I flourish in all the three things I love to do without towing the line of jack of all trades? Thank you very much for this question. This is something to really be uh, conscious of and careful about that we are not dissipating ourselves, chasing so many things at the same time, and then losing focus and not achieving anyone in any real way. What I would say is, you may be quite rightly multi-talented, where you can spin multiple wheels at the same time. If that's the case, that's fine. But examine very clearly what you want to achieve in each area. Are you spinning those wheels at the same time? Is that creating a situation where you are mediocre in each one? If you really plot where you want to go with everything that you're working on, are you able to juggle everything at the same time? If, if not, then I would say prioritize and focus. Man, maybe what you just need to do is to stagger things. Maybe this year your focus is on one thing, and then you introduce something else towards the end of the year. Maybe that's the approach that works for you. But I would say be very true to yourself and, and um, understand your capability and ensure that you are not spinning those wheels at the expense of being excellent at any particular thing. Be clear what that excellent picture looks like, what success looks like, and see if these different... Um, uh, channels 
uh, really getting you there or if you need to prioritize. And if so, sometimes just you, you have to make the hard decisions. Make that tough decision and prioritize. Thank you so much for these amazing questions. I've loved the conversation so far. And we're going to go on a break uh, now. Please uh, send more questions in, and I'll take them after the break. Thank you. During our last um, business speech, I learned three things. First of all, all the mentors said we should leverage on their network, which I'm already working towards. The second thing is to also leverage on the distribution channel of big supermarkets. I was advised to make a list of all the supermarkets in Lagos State and look at their distribution, distribution channels and see how I can leverage on that. And the last, the last thing I learned, I should be more visible on the social media, which I'm already doing. Thank you very much. My key takeaway from this series first was accountability. As a business owner, I learned I have to be accountable to myself. Self-discipline is key in order to build a visionary company. My key learning from the webinar session was really just running with the entrepreneurial mindset which, which seeks to effect change at every turn and does not necessarily wait to adapt to change that had been made externally. And um, a mindset of continuous improvement you know, and continuous growth. I learned a whole lot of things during this section. I learned how to reposition and package my business for profit and also how to get ready for opportunities. I can say that after the mentorship program, I have been able to focus on what really matters in my career path and I have been able to take them one step at a time. I especially appreciated the objective feedbacks that the mentors gave me when I shared my project with them. I also appreciate their fine advice and also their kind ways of encouragement. I'm so grateful to have developed my leadership skills and also my personal effectiveness skills. And I'm particularly thankful to the Beyond Limits Africa team who have taken out time to organize various um, activities to help businesses like myself you know, develop and um, turn their visions into uh, realities. My experience over this journey was so amazing. I learned a whole lot and I've learned so how to grow my business in terms of attitude, you know, and all of that, how to manage failure. I'm particularly excited to have been chosen as the final 12 of the very first Think Tank mentorship session. From the Think Tank sessions, the, um, which were quite intimate and which I really enjoyed, I would say the key things I took away as, as a social enterprise founder was that structure is key, building the right relationships is key, bringing the right people into your business in terms of um, volunteers as well as the board, also very key. And also, most importantly, to ensure that what you're doing is actually adding value and not necessarily just an idea. Uh, the Think Tank helped me to validate some of the things I've been doing and uh, I also go to some areas that I need to improve on so that I can succeed in actualizing my vision of empowering and enabling Africans in underserved communities with digital skills and platforms. Um, the series helped me think deeply and align my daily actions towards my personal goals. Um, the pitch session was also interesting, um, getting concrete feedback from people like Engosa, Nimi and Julia has really helped us rethink um, some of our plans and strategies. And I want to say a very big thank you to the entire team of Beyond Limit Africa. Thank you so much for such an amazing team time section. It was such a mind-blowing experience, really it was. And I want to say a very big thank you to all our mentors. I want to use this opportunity to say a huge thank you to Beyond the Limits Africa for selecting me as one of their finalists for the Think Tank Mentorship Program. And I want to say big thanks to um, the, 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 my mentors who were part of this from Aldo Makori, T.Y., Juliet, everybody who was part of this whole team that made it happen. Trust me, it's, it's, I, I can't thank you enough. I, I sincerely appreciate and I'm looking forward to explore what I've learned and to increase in my craft. Thank you so much to Juliet and Human and the team. And I look forward to checking back in to see how I've developed in the next six months and also to other alumni events that will be organized by your platform. My think tank session was mind blowing. I got a lot of feedback that I would cherish. I, in fact, I can't wait to action every single note I took down. Thank you so much. 
um, Juliet and Human and the team. I really appreciate you. I really like to thank Beyond Limit Africa for this in, in innovative idea, and I advise other young and broad entrepreneurs to ad apply for this session the next time it comes up. I want to say thank you uh, to all the mentors and Juliet for selecting us as one of the top three businesses to receive the grant. Um, we truly appreciate it. Um, we look forward to learning more from you, Juliet, and your amazing network of mentors um, from the entire team at Peng. And we say thank you. Thank you so, so much, Beyond the Limits Africa. Thank you, Mrs. Juliet. I am truly grateful. I want to say a very big shout out to Juliet Ehimwa and everyone behind the Beyond the Meat Team Tank uh, program for the effort and for putting this together. I couldn't have paid for this if it was a paid session, so I want to say a big thank you to the organizers. Thank you so much. I appreciate this. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you for the great webinars that um, emphasized both uh, working on the business as well as working on ourselves as individuals. It was a really positive experience and we appreciate it and look forward to keeping connected with the Beyond Limits group. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me. And thank you for your comments, for your feedback, for your questions. Uh, there was a question about an audio version of the book. Yes, there's going to be an audio version of the book. That will be coming soon, so watch this space. Uh, just to reiterate, it's now available in a number of uh, bookstores in Nigeria. Um, Roving Heights, Laterna Books, Boulders Books, and from tomorrow, you'll be able to pre-order from Amazon. So I'm going to take a few more questions. Questions. We're going to run until about 7.15. I'm going to take a few more questions. Um, so there's a question about mental fortitude. How can young people gain mental fortitude in the midst of societal and personal challenges? This is a great question. So my advice to young people in terms of mental fortitude is to examine the beliefs that you are holding about yourself, about your life, about your environment. And make sure that you're not weighing yourself down with limiting beliefs. Now, a caution flag. This is not to say you deny the facts of the situation or of your life. This is not about uh, self-deception. You know things are not working, but you're telling yourself, it's working, it's working, and deep down you don't even believe it. That's not what we're talking about. What I'm talking about is recognizing the facts. However, working on your story about that fact. So for example, I don't have a godfather, therefore I can't succeed. I don't have a godfather may be a fact. Yeah, right? It's, it's a fact. But your story around it, the therefore I can't succeed, that's the limiting belief. And the empowering belief therefore would be, I don't have a godfather, but there are many people that have succeeded regardless. So that's a classic example of um, what we're talking about um, when we talk about uh, belief systems, just making sure that as much as possible, we're operating from a very empowered context and we can see uh, possibilities. We can see, uh, we can look at the examples that speak to possibilities. So people who have ac accomplished what you were looking to accomplish, people who have gone before you, people who have actually, uh, in some cases, started from um, situations that are much worse than you know where you're starting from. Um, looking at those sorts of examples of success, of, of positivity, and allowing that to lift you up. So I think that's a really important way of training our minds and ensuring that we have the right mental fortitude in spite of whatever is going on in the society. It's not to deny that there is no evidence, there are no challenges, that there are no um, you know, the society we find ourselves in, yes, of course, there are real challenges. But in the same society, we have, we have startups <laughs> raising phenomenal amounts of money. We have uh, early stage companies being acquired for, you know, tons of money. Some of us who just heard about Paystack being acquired for $200 million. Um, Tomato Joss in May, right in the middle of the pandemic, uh, got a, an injection of capital, over $4 million. CUDA 
also raised uh, a significant amount, amount of money recently. So we're having and seeing a lot of these success stories in spite of challenges. And some of the great success role models that we have in the world today, when you unpack their story, you'll really see a lot of challenging moments uh, that could have defeated them. But because they were very clear and convinced about where they wanted to go, they were able to sustain an empowering um, belief system and context to, to move them forward. So I think that's really important and, and much needed, especially when you look around us and, you know, the challenges we've had this year, the challenges we have, um, you know, as a nation as well. And it, we, we can't afford to not be positive or to give up because you're the one that the society is waiting for. It's really up to us to create the reality that we want. I, I mentioned in the book about the fact that each of us needs to take 100% responsibility. And so, and what that means is really, you know, the fact that I need to mobilize whatever tools and resources and, you know, organize my internal world uh, to the point where I can really be, um, uh, I can really come from an empowered perspective. So in day 17, I talk about the fact that your mind is your mansion. Be selective about who and what you allow into your mental space. What are you listening to and giving credence to? Who are the people you surround yourself with? Who do you share your vision with? Do they encourage or put you down? Surround yourself with supportive people, positive conversations, as well as resources that move you forward and open doors to possibilities. I think we need to wrap up now. <laughs> it's really been great sharing this time with you and having this conversation. Once again, the companion set is in, is in um, two forms. There's a tabletop flip book that can sit on your desk and then there's the workbook. And it's my intention that together they serve as a useful and powerful guide on your daily, daily journey around achieving your goals and and uh, personal growth and success. And um, happy to engage more online, to take more questions online, and uh, looking forward to just keeping this conversation alive. Once again, I'll say a very big thank you for your time with, uh, uh, with me this evening. And um, uh, all the very best as you turn the page on 2020. And I really, really wish us all a more energized, happy, fulfilled, um, year ahead. Thank you very much. packed 75 minutes we've had i don't know about you but i've written down so many things from this conversation remember to get a copy of this amazing resource and set yourself up for success in 2021 and beyond this christmas what better way to celebrate than getting copies of this book for your friends and loved ones the book is available in the tabletop version at 4,000 Naira per copy and the hardback version is 5,000 Naira per copy, while the bundle set of both books costs 7,500 Naira only. You save 1,500 when you get both. Thank you for joining us. Please share your experience with this event and tell people about the book on your social media platforms using the hashtag 30 Days of Excellence. 
Follow Juliet Ahimoan on her social media pages at J Ahimoan and keep an eye out for more exciting offers. Remember, amazing opportunities begin with you. Let's go beyond limits. Delights was actually started to tell innovative, exciting and positive food stories out of Lagos, Nigeria. Being the foremost luxurious goods company in the entire West Africa is a big deal. Uh, will you have every opportunity now? But you see, the opportunities you lose on account of your value system, that's your opportunity cost for what you believe, and it's the price you must be willing to pay. Thank you very much, I'm blessed.